And we're learning lots of behind the scenes details about former President Donald Trump's deal with the tabloid to bury negative stories ahead of the 2016 election. This all has to do with David Pecker. He's on the on the stand right now. He's the former publisher of the National Enquirer. Chief legal correspondent Katie Barlow is here. Uh, let's start, though, with the gag order here. Yeah, that's how the morning started. So Judge Marchand began the day with a hearing over whether former President Donald Trump should be held in contempt of court for violating this gag order that prohibits him from making public comments about witnesses. Now, prosecutors say he's violated the order at least 10 times with various social media posts and comments to the press. They want the judge to fine him at least $3,000 for the first three violations. All right, so what was interesting here, because I all the analysis I saw about day one, there were a lot of people saying nice things about Todd Blanche, saying that he was doing the job that Donald Trump wanted him to do out there. Today, the, the judge had some pretty harsh things to say to him. That's right. I, Todd has a really tough job here. He has a needle to thread, essentially. But the judge told him, you are losing all credibility with the court, words you never want to hear from a judge mm -hmm. in a criminal case, right? And this came after an exchange about the gag order, where Blanche was trying to argue that Trump was just reposting other people's posts. He wasn't making the comments directly about witnesses Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen. He yeah. was just reposting what other people had to say. It's that old question of, is a, is a repost <laughs> something that you endorse, yeah. right? Um, but the judge said, okay, do you have any case law on that? Can you show me any case that backs you up on that? Blanche said no. Then Blanche tried to argue, well, really, Trump is just responding to other people's posts and not making them himself. He, he should have the right to respond mm -hmm. here. And the judge said, all right, Blanche, can you show me an example of a post he's responding to. No. And that's when he got kind of the lashing out of you're losing all credibility with the court. But still, uh, there was something on Truth Social. Trump or somebody put something right after this hearing. So they are still getting it out there. Yeah. So we didn't see Trump's fingers on the keyboard necessarily. But right after this hearing, Trump or somebody took to his account on Truth Social and went after the judge, saying that he's taken away my constitutional right to free speech. But ironically, in that post, which is perfectly allowed under the gag order, mm -hmm. he's going after the judge. He's allowed to make public comments about the judge and about District Attorney Alvin Bragg. But as Trump's lawyer, that might not be what you want, particularly after a hearing where the judge, at the end of it, reserved final decision making on whether he's going to hold Trump in contempt. What things people love about Donald Trump is that he, he is said to say what's on his mind, so it'll be interesting to see if they say, but he didn't post that. Right. But regardless, uh, David Pecker talked about catch and kill, something we heard so much about uh, prior to this trial here. We got some confirmation that seemed to be the case. We did. Pecker on the stand under oath confirmed that the catch and kill scheme exists. There was an agreement made between Michael Cohen, Trump's former fixer, Trump and Pecker in a meeting along with Hope Hicks, who eventually worked for the White House for Donald Trump, uh, that they would basically buy negative stories about the president in order to bury them. They would also do work to publish negative stories about people that Trump was running against, both in the general election in 2016 and his Republican fellow Republicans for the nomination. Now, um, all of this is uh, Pecker testified to conversations he had with Michael Cohen mm -hmm. about buying these stories and burying them, uh, including a former doorman story that Trump had a child out of wedlock with a former employee that was later confirmed as false, according to Pecker, uh, and also Karen McDougal's story, who's a former Playboy model yeah. who says she had a year-long affair and was paid $150,000 for that. But Pecker's testimony thus far is all about his conversations with Michael Cohen. And this is the problem here, and the hurdle that prosecutors are going to have to clear is to show that Trump had the knowledge and the intent that what he was doing was illegal when he paid this money that was really for the purpose of uh, influencing the 2016 election. That's a high bar to clear. And so far with the testimony, it's about Pecker's conversations with Cohen. And Trump isn't necessarily a part of those ongoing conversations with the catch and kill scheme. We are still at the starting line of this case. Katie's going to take us through every step of the way. Katie, thank you.